The entire time I was watching that video, all of my sphincters were contracted because that just sounds like the most painful thing. Tuesday of week six, which means I'm one sixth of the way through MD2, which is crazy. It's gonna be like one minute before I graduate. Holy crap. This morning I have a placement day, so I'm just gonna wait for my friend Ali, and then we're probably gonna go around the wards, maybe try to scope out a good long case to get that done with early in the week. And then I have a bunch of lectures that I need to get through because I'm still behind, unfortunately. And then later in the day, we have our clinical skills class where we get to learn the exams so i'm looking forward to that it's gonna be a long and busy day but it's been a good long weekend as well so making up for it i think i'm feeling pretty good this morning not as good as i normally feel on a monday because i did go out this weekend and i'm still feeling a bit dusty from it <laughs> And I also haven't been to the gym in a few days, so a bit of a blast start to the week. My drug of the day is clopidogrel, which is an antiplatelet drug, and it is good to use in someone who is maybe allergic to aspirin. Feeling good this morning, and I think it's the jacket. At the gym this morning, I was working off a workout app, and it recommended me an exercise that I've never done before. And I was working on my shoulders, and the exercise involved me lifting up quite a bit of weight, and essentially jerking it above my head. And I'm looking at this exercise and I'm like, look, from what I know about third class levers. Editing Ashima here, and I had to stop to take the opportunity to fully flex my physics knowledge because this opportunity doesn't happen that often. And I spent so long trying to learn this and I'll be damned if I learned it for nothing. So your arm and shoulder creates what is called a third class lever. And then basically what that means is that any load that I have in my hand here, it's going to require more force for me to move it at this point in my arm. And the advantage of this lever is that you can do it faster here than you can here. But overall, more load on the shoulder than there is here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I would please like an award. I was also thinking about how the shoulder joint is the most dislocated joint in the body. I'm staring at this exercise. I'm like, man, I don't know. There's something not quite right about this exercise. But I was like, fuck it, I'll just do it, whatever. Immediately twanged my shoulder. I should really trust my instincts a bit better next time. It's fine, luckily it's nothing major. It just feels a little bit sore. This morning I have my ethical practice class and every week someone runs the tute and this week it's me, I'm running the tute. So I'm going in a bit early to do the readings for the class and coming up with discussion questions that we can talk about. And the topic today is informed consent. Yesterday was a pretty good day. I accompanied my friend Ali to the wards while he did a long case because the patient that we found happened to have the same condition that I had for my long case. I didn't want to repeat it. After that, I tried to find a patient for myself as well, but then we found a patient eventually and they were asleep and I kind of felt like doing my lecture work anyway. So I just bailed and did that instead. We have our first test for the year coming up in a couple of weeks. It's only 5%, but I still want to try to do as well as I can. I want to start biting off a bit more now at the hospital because so far I've only been doing the hospital and YouTube and that's it as far as extracurricular go but I know a lot of my classmates and group mates have signed up for a lot of different committees and stuff like that and I want to get more involved now I feel pretty acclimatized so I'm ready to take on more responsibility and check out more of the hospital and meet more people so one of the questions that I came up with was name some barriers to ethically sound informed consent that you've witnessed at the hospital and identify key types of information that patients need to be given in order for informed consent to be valid and ethically sound. My class that I ran today went pretty well. I'm noticing a shift this year from last year where last year we were taught a really idealistic version of medicine and ethics and what how they apply. They're transitioning to more gray areas and everything is less clear. There's also quite a difference between what different teachers will tell you about medicine. For example, last year we got taught to not use the word student doctor to describe ourselves and to describe ourselves as medical students as student doctor can be deceptive. But our teacher this year thinks that saying student doctor is perfectly fine. So I guess that leaves me kind of unclear as to whether or not that's fine or not. Anyway, glad that running that class is over. I'm pretty happy with the amount of work I got done today. I think I managed to get through about five lectures. So now I'm finally up to this week's lectures, week six. I was still on week five. And I didn't see any patients today because 
because I just wanted to get this done. But I think tomorrow and Friday are going to be big patient seeing days and I can prioritize that because now I'm up to date with my lectures ish. I'm heading home now at five o'clock, which is really rare for me. I've been getting out of here about six or seven, but it's my old work manager's leaving uh, drinks. So I'm going to see her and all my old work colleagues who I haven't seen in about a year. So I'm excited to see all those guys. They're like my second family. I was watching Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's Oprah interview last night. James and I were having a laugh because the next day after that interview, Oprah tweeted that it wasn't the Queen or Prince Philip who made those remarks about the baby's skin color. And we were just laughing about what that phone call would have been like yo oprah you ever heard of jeffrey epstein me neither oh my goodness we had a lecture today on how to insert an indwelling catheter which i completely forgot was happening but it's happening this friday we have our sim lab and if you don't know what that is it is inserting a tube into someone's urethra so if you're a male through the penis or if you're a female in that little area um, near the vagina and poking it all the way through until the bladder so that you can drain the bladder the entire time i was watching that video all of my sphincters were contracted because that just sounds like the most painful thing and that just sounds horrendous to do as well and i'm extremely nervous that was so much fun. Oh my goodness. My old manager was leaving Ikea and she'd been there for a really, really long time. So everyone showed up and it was just so nice. I got to see so many of my old colleagues that I have known since I was like 16 and just haven't seen in a long time. So that was so lovely. And in an amazing coincidence, I got to meet the beautiful Rachel. Hi, Rachel, who happens to work at Ikea and happens to watch my videos as well. So that just made me feel so happy to see her beautiful smiling face telling me that she watches my videos. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure to meet you. You're such a legend. My baby abs are coming back in the right lighting. Love you, Dizzy. Love you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I had to sleep in this morning because I was up a little bit late last night because something came up that I needed to attend to. The hospital I'm at encouraged us to take a half day off. So I just figured I'll take it today morning and then I'll do the full day Friday. So then I, that makes up for the week. So now considering I'm already kind of late, I'm just going to go to Officeworks to get some manila folders because apparently that's the best material to write a long case on, a manila folder. That's been the advice that we've been given. So I'm going to go do that and then head into the hospital and then head straight to the wards, not to the library today. Goodbye, my sleeping angel. Bye, Willie. Really, I didn't forget about you. Bye, Willie. Really. Good girl. Today is going to be a huge Friday. We've got so much on. I've barely had time to breathe or think about what's going on today. Going on my second and final general medicine ward round this morning. I can't say I've spent much time on that ward. Actually, I have not spent any time on that ward. I've only been to one ward round and I haven't even gone around to speak to any of the patients there. I think the general vibe that I've gotten from other students is just that a lot of the patients there are quite sick. So it can be hard to find a patient who's willing to talk to you. But having said that, I haven't personally tried. So I definitely need to make more of an effort when we have our rotating term through there later in the year. A few things on today. I have ward round now. They've got my clinical skills class at that time, 11 to 12, then indwelling catheter lab at 1.15 and then peer exam at 3.30. And then I'm hosting a games night at my house. Today was such a long day, but it's Friday and it's done now, so that's fucking awesome. This morning, my friend Audrey and I went on the ward round for general medicine and we were only around for a couple of hours because we had a shoot in the morning as well. This week was good because we had an MD4 student with us as well. And it's nice to have another MD student around so you can ask questions to them and not feel like you're getting in the way of the doctors, even though they're so happy to teach us as well. I actually really enjoy going on the general medicine ward rounds. 
I can definitely see myself being in that sort of role because it's a lot of problem solving. So all of the patients have such complicated medical histories. It looks like a part of medicine that involves a lot of thinking. It feels like probably the most house type of doctoring that I've seen, which I'm about um, over, for example, something like surgery. I want to expose myself more to something like general medicine because I do feel kind of attracted to doing something like that. My main bit of knowledge that I learned today from our ward rounds was about osteoporosis. There was a person on the ward who had osteoporosis and they were all male. And so the doctor wanted to investigate why they had osteoporosis because apparently for women, it's like a normal normal part of aging essentially but men shouldn't really get osteoporosis and he wasn't that old either so they were investigating why he might have had that the doctor wanted to rule out cancer and something wrong with his testosterone levels so that was my bit of learning for the day after that we had our clinical skills class so our teacher took us to a patient's bed that she'd seen the day before and we were all in the room but only one of us examined him and we just watched our colleague examine the person it was a cardiovascular exam and the guy had a murmur so that's it's probably been the hardest part of the technical skills of MD, learning how to listen for murmurs. The stethoscope is actually super difficult to understand and learn well. When you're an amateur, it's pretty difficult sometimes to discern the difference between a heart sound and a breath sound. And then you hear the murmurs and they're quite soft. You have to strain to hear. It's not obvious like you'd like them to be. So apparently this patient had quite a good murmur to hear, but I didn't get to hear it. I think I'm going to hatch a plan to try to get better at using my stethoscope. I might log into the patient file system and go to the cardiac ward and then just make a note of all the patients who have aortic stenosis or any of the conditions that have a murmur and then I might try to specifically go to those patients because at the moment what I've been doing is I just go to the ward and then I ask any of the doctors there who I can do a long case on or take a history from and I don't have any specifications but I think being more specific in my search might give me more of what I want to hear especially with the stethoscope. Editing Shima here. Pastor Shima is so smart. What a great idea that I haven't implemented yet. Totally gonna do that. Thanks, girlfriend. That was such a good class. I love that class. I wish we could have that class twice a week because it really helps me feel more confident in my exam skills. Immediately after that, we had a tour with one of the doctors who was showing us around ED because that's our next rotation because we're done with general medicine for now. And she showed us around ED. She was actually so funny. She took us to this tiny room and she was like, now guys, if you need somewhere to hide, like come here because you can get away from the business of the ED in here, which I thought was sweet. ED is so much hustle and bustle and she was really reiterating to us that you are always going to feel like you're in the way in ED. It's just the nature of the room. So don't feel bad about feeling like you're in the way because everyone feels that way. I'm really excited to start that on Monday. Everyone has said such good things about ED. So I'm really excited to get in there and experience that side of it. Right after our ED thing, we went to our indwelling catheter simulation. We learned on dummies with penises how to put tubes in them and keep it all sterile. Here, our lovely Kit is demonstrating how to do an aseptic non-touch technique of opening the catheter pack. So this way, everything inside stays sterile because you haven't touched anything. Whoa, Kit, I don't think you needed to go this hard on emptying the lube packet, but good to see that you're not wasting anything. Ta-da! One side of the blue dish has saline and the other side has plain water and you have to put the cotton balls in the saline. So how the teachers taught us to remember it is to remember that you need salty balls. Hee <laughs> hee. Here Kit is lubricating the catheter so it hopefully doesn't tear the urethra on the way in. I was pretty surprised by how girthy the catheters actually are. They were thicker than I imagined them to be. The key to keeping everything sterile in the catheter insertion is to just keep one hand on the penis at all times and that hand is your dirty hand, so your non-sterile hand, and the other hand is your sterile hand. And so long as you keep one hand on the penis, you should hopefully not contaminate anything with it. I forgot to film the step right before this, which is inserting a anesthetic gel into the penis. But two minutes after that is when you can start inserting the catheter in and you just slide it all the way through using your sterile hand only until you reach the end of the catheter. Full insertion is extremely important as there's a balloon at the end of the catheter that you fill up with water. And if you fill it up too early while it's still in the urethra, you can cause some damage. It was actually 
easier in technique than the cannulation that we did last week because the cannulation there was a lot more things to keep sterile in this indwelling catheter procedure it's a lot more obvious what needs to be sterile but it's obviously way more invasive to put a tube into someone's penis slash urethra and i know that i'm going to be shitting myself when i actually have to do it i'm heading home now because i'm actually hosting a games night tonight and we're going to play secret hitler Oh my God, I forgot to say, I had a long case toot yesterday and I wasn't presenting in class, but my classmates were. And for the first few weeks, our teacher was taking it easy, he said. I was like, yes, yeah, sweet. And it was pretty relaxed. But then this week he was like, okay, we're going to be more true to what the exam conditions will be like. And we'll have a question time at the end. And okay, our, our teacher is a pediatrician. So he's the most gentle, softly spoken man ever. He's amazing. But did he grill the people who were doing their long case he showed no mercy he asked them both so many questions and he just would not quit like if they didn't know the answer it was just like another question another question another question and i didn't know the answer to any of the questions that he asked them so fuck i think it's gonna be a lot scarier than i initially thought last week luckily he's so nice so i mean even if i got nothing right i wouldn't feel like so terrible about myself but i'm really nervous now about having to present and then going through that grilling holy shit the presentation talking part goes for 12 minutes and for example one of the people had a um someone who had gout and that was their presentation so the questions were like how would you differentiate between gout and septic arthritis what tests would you order to try to differentiate between both of them what would you see in a culture or not sorry not a culture what would you see if you got fluid from the joint of someone with gout like what would you see like all pathology sort of questions and i mean it's going to be amazing for our learning we're going to learn so much it's going to be such a good push to revise but i'm scared Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned and I am a huge glutton who's eaten like this three weekends in a row. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How do you feel? You are very old and wise. Hang on, Kate, Kate, Katie, hold him up. Oh. <laughs> That's actually really funny. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming everyone and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, it would be awesome if you could like, comment and subscribe as it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm and I will see you next week.